to uh, run the roundover bit around the rail uh, all the way uh, with a roundover bit of course the smoothness of these surfaces that the bit rides on will determine what it looks like you always have to run some bit of sandpaper over afterwards to remove mil machine marks we <clears throat> got a little gap there that I haven't putted and we don't want the uh, bit to to dig in there so it's a reminder to myself to finish that little bit by hand make the curve by hand and uh, back through here on the transom cap you know the roundover bits not gonna sit the same way on this angle might have to do that by hand uh, so a little bit nervous a little bit looking forward to seeing how that comes out a big old cut into any of this would be unfortunate so I'd like to get as much of a curve over these rail edges as I can. Uh, there's a limit because you got to make sure that bearing doesn't come off, obviously. And with most of them, they end up having a cutter bit up here. We don't want to make a want to make a want to make a little inset deal. So we'll do a couple of test pieces and see how these go. One thing, if you've never used routers before, that's a little counterintuitive about them. Of course, they're spinning in one direction. And so there's a right direction and a wrong direction to go on the piece. The router's spinning like this. You want the piece to be going against the uh, direction of spin. And the reason is, if you're going with it, uh, it gives a chance for the router to catch, more of a chance for the router bit to catch. And the speed at which it's coming past the work slows down if it's going with the cut, and that increases the opportunity for it to catch and pull. So it's a little, not what you might expect, you're going against the direction of turn. A little too deep. That's eh, probably about as good as I can get. Maximizing the curve, and uh, we'll see how this goes. pretty well uh, eased off pressing too hard normally you don't want to press any harder than you have to anyway against the edge um, but with the potential for gaps uh, this is just a start we can hand contour that same across the very tip of the bow here but all in all that's looking good you can see there's machine mark 
left, so we'll just do a little bit of additional sanding as well as by hand rounding over uh, the underside just a bit. But uh, I don't see any huge problems, so that's fun. Didn't take long, but uh, a lot of work to get to that point right there. So here's what I'm doing, just moving kind of quick with a well-worn 50 grit across this edge and then uh, very quickly removing the bits of machine uh, evidence there. So here you can see there's sort of a sharp line, sharp line there, and uh, where I've just kind of very quickly gone over it. I'm not trying to change that nice curve that the cutter bit gave us, but just eliminating as best we can the uh, evidence of machining, and then a, a lighter hand sand, finish sand over that will <coughs> clear it up. Can't do that out here because I don't want the edge of that sander to hit our finish. So I'm going to do something else out here. For this inside edge, I think what I'm going to do is just take the uh, rabbit plane and do basically a 45. Just take that corner off and then a quick hand sand around that. I think will give the feel to the hand of being rounded and finished. Don't have to take much. Almost finished where this feels good underneath as well as uh, looking right across here on the transom rather than trying to get the router to do something right over this angled surface. I'm going to take the same approach which is to do a straight face across here. Get into the radius of the curve that I want. And then probably cut each of those spaces in half, and from there, we'll be able to just sand it to a rounded surface. It's by the way how we'll be making spars, rounded spars. We got our 45 or, or bisected of that corner. And now we'll take half of that off as well. Both of those. Same on the outside. Still not going to give it a totally consistent shape that a router bit would. But by doing multiple straight faces, it's going to be a lot closer than if we just start rounding it. I think now it's to the point where you can take some sandpaper. Our uh, rails are ready for finish, but it's too cold. So the next step, I think I'm going to tackle is the main thwart. I got to decide how high we really want it. And cut the daggerboard trunk off accordingly. It needs to fasten to R2 and come back from there, so it'll fit over R2. Decide how the side benches are going to fit into that. So there's a lot of decision design decisions that need to be made. 11 3 8 hang over a half inch on each side. Notice this crack. And uh, that's not really great. So we've got to figure out where best to take it out of this piece of wood and, and then right through the thickness planer. So from the back side, 
11 3 8 minus half inch, 10 and 7 8 4 foot 5 or so. Went to check the back side of this crack. And not only does it go farther along here, and then I started looking up here, and there's a really serious structural problem right through. So I hate to do this, but I can get right out of the middle of this guy for our 4-5. Uh, I shimmed the aft end of this cradle up just a little bit to, to get closer to the eyeball where I'm thinking it's going to sit in the water in order to start really designing <clears throat> the layout of the interior. We're going to have the fort here, fort here, and side benches between. So there's going to be a continuous line between these two benches. We said a long time ago, three inches down to the top of this thwart, that's that line, level this line and see about where we want it to land over here. We need to cut a lead in underneath it. The top of this board to be lead in there and also cut this down to proper height. And then uh, shape the pieces before it goes on, round overs. And we're going to need to let in for the sides of the benches, side benches, which means we've got to make some design decisions about that as well. So that's our three inches down to the surface of that clamp brought out there level. And then eyeballing just where we want the level of these, this bench, two and three quarters down. And that clamp surface also brought out there. It seems pretty unscientific. You can use that to take off the top of the dagger board trunk. It's just about level, so my eyeball, my eyeball basically, if the boat's sitting about where it'll sit in the water, this, this is approximately level. All right, this is the top of this thwart here. We want the daggerboard trunk to come in a quarter inch. So we don't want to cut it off three quarter inches below that. We just want to cut it off a half inch below that line. And take that around and don't screw it up. This is definitely not something you want to mess up. So that's our cutoff line. We'll double check it. This is one of the more scary commit points sure hope that was right take a quarter inch out so that slide back and down over the top of the trunk.
let in we'll be filling in with a face piece of mahogany there and a similar one back here and let's see now this that's pretty good so we're really looking for this line what was missing to continue on about where we want it so we got to decide how far out this comes what the joints gonna look like before we install this run the round over where we can that's uh, that's pretty fun that's a big step thinking we just come out 12 inches and uh, follow that have it follow the contour of the side of the boat back with a smaller round over bit for the for the bottom edge, I want a nice, really uh, good feeling curve here. So let's see. The plywood to lap on here, three eighths. So we'll just take the same bevel. So the plywood seats will sit in here. So we got to keep a, a little bit away for how that joint's going to be. And I think we'd go right on across this. Pinch taken out. I'm going to use the fence. All right, looking pretty good. Clean up that arc as we decide how that plywood's going to fit and what the little facing uh, spale piece will do across the plywood and uh, over here as well. Now I'm going to do the uh, round over on the underside. About all we can do prior to actually installing it, except it's going to be easier to cut the opening through to the dagger board trunk while we can still get it on and off. size seat coming back here we need some more sapele sergeant's been practice you really could yeah, keep yeah, sure. powered on cross control stall. you know you're sitting like me. Happy birthday, Papa. thank you yeah so you just put this in yeah so you can glue it in yet Looking can't to wait until put the finish on all this tequila. It's just it's, it's gonna look like this. Here, the wood. <coughs> That's gonna be fun, but not it's gonna light up. Or dark enough. It's dark enough here. Okay. That's my favorite so part. Not screwed up yet. We're gonna draw a straight line. That's a skinny tree. Here we go, ready? Two, here we go. Take yeah. this person ever sit on. Yeah. I'm going to take a picture. I was just going to say. <laughs> you know what else? Say. 